welcome back to my testimony on JCC TV where we bring you stories of they that have been through it, they that have overcome and they that are here to share their stories with us, to share their journeys with us, to encourage us, to give us some direction and give us some hope. And my guest today is Bishop Sami Kiangi of JCC at the river. Thank you. Thank you. I love I loved what you said earlier that when you compromise your calling, you compromise your destiny. Yeah. That is very powerful. Yes. And I'm thinking, have you ever gotten to a point in ministry and you are like, I am done. <laughs> I am tired. <laughs> Several. Uh -huh. Several. Yeah. And uh, you got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Several. I, th I remember, I don't know the year, uh, when you, 1995, mm -hmm. we came here with uh, one of my key deacon. He was like my support, supporter. I mean, in terms of mm -hmm. substances mm -hmm. and whatever. But then we, we divert. <laughs> on ministry. <laughs> yeah. And then he, when I came here, church was paying nothing. Yeah. For over two years, I was living on my own resources. Because when you pioneer a church, there is no salary. <laughs> so I used to pay my own house. And uh, I said to God, I'm not going to go to a small house. I'll go to a house like I used to do in Sustaina mm -hmm. so that my kids don't see that we are downgraded. Yeah. I was paying the house 3,500, the church was giving 1,500. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he was like, this guy was uh, supporting me mm -hmm. and he was resourceful. But then we divert mm -hmm. on means to ground mm -hmm. and he went. Now it looked like now things are going to fall apart <laughs> because there is no financial substance. The yeah. church was still small. Yeah. But let me tell you, God is gracious. Mm -hmm. That was tough. Mm -hmm. That year was tough. Mm -hmm. But God saw us through. Mm -hmm. He saw through. Mm -hmm. We were able to, suffer, to, to survive, mm -hmm. to go through nicely, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ministry grew. Mm -hmm. And we are able to mm -hmm. to meet all our bills and uh, to eat. Amen. Yes. Bishop, how do you handle disputes in ministry? Because they are there. Mm. And they, they'll still come. So how do you handle disputes when it comes to ministry? When it comes to ministry, one of the key gifts any leader must have is wisdom. Mm -hmm. You cannot do leadership when you lack wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is what to do in crisis, wow. in crisis. So one is to get all the facts together. Never make a decision until you have all the facts on the table. Because you will make a decision which is not well thought. One thing I'm not in a hurry in the city in disputes. Mm -hmm. I get all the facts on the ground completely. Mm -hmm. You realize I'm leading the largest yeah. JCC. But I'm telling you, mine is very harmonious. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had challenges here and there. Mm -hmm. One thing, you don't compromise the will of God mm -hmm. at any cost. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm -hmm. you, you, you must go for the will of God. But then you must have wisdom. Number two, get all the facts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you have all the facts, then you engage everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you sort it out. Mm -hmm. We had a crisis like in the, in Machakos, mm -hmm. when we changed leadership. Mm -hmm. But we handled it. It was one of the toughest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then now people are saying the change was was actually inevitable mm -hmm. because now the peace that there and the growth yeah. had was spoken. Mm -hmm. We did this in many mm -hmm. That was a tough change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, one of the costs of a leader is to make unpopular decisions yeah. and stand by them. Yeah. That decision looked very unpopular in Kibwes. Mm -hmm. But we had done all facts. I went with my people, we decided this is the person to run this, this sub district. Yeah. Now we had no doubt, mm -hmm. but there were many people opposing than those who accepted. Yeah. 
you know god is not democratic no. <laughs> yeah. god god government is his word mm -hmm. and his will mm -hmm. so you got to pursue the will of god mm -hmm. so one thing is have wisdom mm -hmm. have some interpersonal skills know how to handle people use language which is joining people there's kitu mbisho mtoto tuambie kiongozi unganisha kiongozi atenganishi usiwe na maneno makali utafuru utafanya waende don't raise your emotions talk soberly you know give everybody an opportunity to speak the heart now when you have all those facts with you you can handle crisis i have handled crisis in even in during redeemed time uh, bishop mateka used me to set a crisis in uh, districts there were the crisis in makuene mm -hmm. i was with them for six months mm -hmm. and i said to lead up and i gave him a leader there was a crisis in mwenge mateka by then i was he was a bishop i was as a secretary mm -hmm. he sent me there for one year mm -hmm. and the issue was such it was so what you need is you need wisdom you need patience you need to listen to people listen more than you talking mm -hmm. because what problem we have when you are solving an issue you talk too much mm -hmm. you don't allow people to talk we can use the way they use like a doctor when he come you go for a doctor mm -hmm. he allows you to speak mm -hmm. then you will be able to diagnose mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. and there is a verse I normally use in leadership when i'm settling at this beauty in james 119 the bible says be slow to anger slow to speak but quick to hear. Mm -hmm. That's a principle I use all the time. Mm -hmm. Be slow to anger. Mm -hmm. Because when you raise your emotions, you will resolve anything. Yeah. So make sure you are not easily irritated. Mm -hmm. And then number two, don't be quick <laughs> to speak. Give people time. Mm -hmm. And then you will be able to get to the root cause. Mm -hmm. Even the councillors, when they go to you, they listen to you until they get the root cause. Mm -hmm. In that way, you will be able to settle any dispute. Mm -hmm. Slow to anger, slow to speak, mm -hmm. but quick to listen. To listen. Yeah. listen to people. Mm -hmm. Some of them have. You see, a leader doesn't have a monopoly of knowledge. Mm -hmm. People may see what you are not saying. Yeah. So take time to listen to them. Mm -hmm. They may look small. Don't despise anybody. Mm -hmm. Don't. Mm -hmm. That's one of my principles in leadership. I listen to everybody. I give them my hearing, mm -hmm. you know, and that one has helped me to in the leader. I've been in leadership for many years, mm -hmm. many years. I think my job was 14, and this is another big period. Mm -hmm. But that has been my principle. Mm -hmm. Now, any area I've led, it has been peaceful. People have been motivated. They have been moving ahead, mm -hmm. and I've easily reached. I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone wants to see me, I allow him. Yeah. And that way makes me to get information from everywhere and I'm able to lead mm -hmm. with the information on the ground. How do you get the right people in the right leadership positions? Right leadership positions, one, there is the qualification in the Bible mm -hmm. of what a leader should be. Mm -hmm. Whoever aspires to be a, a bishop, mm -hmm. he should be blameless, mm -hmm. husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. All those mm -hmm. must be considered if you compromise that, you are brewing a problem. Number one, let him be fettered by the scriptures. Now, if he, the scriptures does indivate him, I don't care who he is. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't allow. I even here before I appoint you as a pastor, mm -hmm. the scriptures must accept you. Mm -hmm. You may be look good, mm -hmm. but if I realize there is a principle in the Bible, you are not a leader. Is not like a member, mm -hmm. a leader must be an example. Mm -hmm. And so I vet you by the scriptures. I vet you by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit speaks. Mm -hmm. Then I'm able to see this leader qualifies. Mm -hmm. And then you put him to a position. Mm -hmm. All the pastors that have given the positions here, mm -hmm. they have they are doing very well. Mm -hmm. We have one in Kitangala is almost a bishop now. Another in Mololongo. And the, way they go, they are doing well. The thing I believe also in training. Mm -hmm. I train a lot. Mm -hmm. I've done courses in leadership mm -hmm. more than anything else. I've trained in Singapore for a month mm -hmm. on leadership alone. Mm -hmm. I've also been in Malaysia for another month for leadership alone. 
And uh, even in my office for 20 years in Uburukupan, I was doing leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, those, those uh, they train, you really, you are really trained on many areas. Mm -hmm. They have helped me, mm -hmm. even in my capacity mm -hmm. in the leadership. Mm -hmm. So appointing must fit in scripturally. Mm -hmm. You must, uh, if the scriptures don't accept you, mm -hmm. never, never dare. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest hindrance to church growth today? One of the greatest things of church growth is lack of skills. Many people, many pastors are not skilled. Mm -hmm. Many of them, they don't have a mender. Mm -hmm. They just join the church. They have never been under any training on because it takes skill building capacity of people is very critical mm -hmm. if we have to go far. So lack of training. Mm -hmm. And when you lack training, that is like everything. Mm -hmm. Without skills, what do you do? There are skills which are needed so that somebody can go cause growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, this training, plus also you realize these days many people don't want to be trained. They want to be under under somebody, many will be these days, they don't want to be under authority, they don't want to be mandated. Mm -hmm. Somebody want to be a freelancer out there. Mm -hmm. But I think lack of training is one of the problems. Mm -hmm. Lack of training. Because when you don't know what you're supposed to do, then you cannot be an achiever. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing may be now your priorities. Mm -hmm. Because I'm realizing if you want churching world and you're always doing any rich meetings, then uh, what are you doing? For me, I say some of the English meetings are selfish. You God anointing me and you don't go out. The anointing is for service. Yeah. You are not anointed and stay in church. Mm -hmm. You are anointed to go out there. Mm -hmm. When God uh, fill me with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is for that reason. He says, you just if the power of the Holy Ghost is upon and you will be my witness. Mm -hmm. So many people churches, their programs are in rich. Mm -hmm. But sinners don't come to church. Yeah. They may come a few. Mm -hmm. I like what Tillborn says. Jesus was not crucified in a church between two candles, but he was crucified in the marketplace between the two thieves. Mm -hmm. So if we have to have church growth, we must go to the market. Mm -hmm. We must have programs of outreach and train people for outreach so that we can bring the fruit. Mm -hmm. Early church, they were out there. Mm -hmm. Jesus was out there. Mm -hmm. But this time we want to stay together. Mm -hmm. Our fellowships, worship experience. Mm -hmm. Very nice meetings inside. And to me, when I look at them critically, they are selfish. Mm -hmm. Just like it was in uh, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They enjoyed that fellowship and Jew Paul scattered them up. They went there for a preaching. That's why Philip came to Samaria. Mm -hmm. So if we don't scatter ourselves, God may scatter us. <laughs> yeah. sure. And so there cannot be growth without skill. There cannot be growth without making deliberate efforts to go out there mm -hmm. to win souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which are some of the uh, mistakes the church is making today from leadership to members? One is, I think, one of the mistakes we are making is we are not really sticking to the word of God as it is. There is diluting mm -hmm. of the word mm -hmm. whereby people want to allow to make it uh, a, you know, law, so sheep that everybody can come in. Mm -hmm. Now I, I look at Jesus' uh, preaching and the way he did his ministry was different. Mm -hmm. You remember he told people, if you want to follow me, deny yourself mm -hmm. take up your own cross mm -hmm. and follow me you see there is a responsibility there is a commitment now we must preach whereby people make decisions mm -hmm. and are able to be responsible mm -hmm. and uh, they must uh, live the godly way holiness these days is not popular in, in our pulpits but that is the message which will make us in it. The Bible says, pursue peace with everybody and holiness without which nobody will mm -hmm. see God. So I think there is a diluting of the preaching and the people are making it so cheap so that everybody can, can come. But the Bible says men are called, but few are chosen. So I think we must preach the way it is. We are messengers. 
communicate the word of God the way it is. Don't make it so uh, simple, soft, so that you can allow many people. Mm -hmm. There is also, you find it, there's a lot of uh, motivational preaching. Mm -hmm. I don't see it in the Bible. You must preach the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You must preach for people to live like what God desires. Yeah, so the, it, it, we, we need to get back again to the, mm -hmm. to the preaching of the early church, whereby people were challenged to live a life which is Christ-like. Yeah. Why should one submit to a Christ as a church and as a person? You, you see, that, that's the only way you will be mended. You, you need a grace whereby you can be able to get nourished and helped in the ministry to, mm -hmm. to be ushered. Mm -hmm. It was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. Joshua submitted to Moses. Moses, Timothy to Paul. Mm -hmm. You will never be a Paul until you learn to become a Timothy. Mm -hmm. You will never exercise authority until you learn to be under authority. So this is the way, you know, we have a generation one by the one that ends result, but they don't want to go through the process. Mm -hmm. Mendership is critical. You must submit to a grace. Mm -hmm. And you must have a father mm -hmm. who is, helps you to correct you, to instruct you. Because he has been there long. Mm -hmm. He saw what you have not seen yourself. And I remember in Joshua, the Bible says, uh, Israel served God in the times of Joshua and the elders mm -hmm. who had seen the great works of God. Elders actually whistleblowers and they are standard bearers. Mm -hmm. When they prepared that temple, Zerubbabel, mm -hmm. and they realized it, they are lowering the standard, the elders were crying. Mm -hmm. They were not laughing like the others. They said, no, this is not the way it was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I think we need a grace to help us and hush us mm -hmm. to an even higher ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. So Bishop, as we wind up, I would like you to speak to a pastor that is struggling with church growth, uh, another pastor who is also struggling with the leaders of their church, one who doesn't know also how to choose leaders. Mm. I just talk to them on that camera. Now, if you're a pastor and uh, you have a calling in your life, it is very important. One, you must have uh, identify a father, a mentor, you need a mentor because you cannot mend others when yourself you are not mended. Secondly, if it is a question of leaders, leaders must be vetted by the scriptures. A leader whose the Bible doesn't accept and all the standards of the Bible doesn't meet cannot be a leader. Mm -hmm. Even in the corporate world, they vet people very seriously. God also vets. Mm -hmm. Now, so if we are going to have the right leaders, they must be chosen in the leading of the Holy Spirit because God knows the hearts of the people. There must be prayer for direction. And even after direction, there must be the fitting as the Bible demands. What kind of a leader do we need in the church? He must be a, a person who is an example in purity, in faithfulness, Somebody who you can say, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. When you follow that somebody, you are sure of getting to heaven because himself is following Christ. So any leader is not following Christ. He cannot be accepted and cannot be you know, given a position. So we must be very strict because things rise and fall on leaders. Now when we got the wrong leaders already, actually leadership is everything. So leaders must be properly chosen by prayer and they must be vetted no compromise you know they normally say there should be no compromise when it comes to loyalty it must be 100 percent and so you must be sure these are leaders you better take time to make sure these are the right leaders and you will have less problems mm -hmm. to get a leader to a position easy but to remove it to remove me it, it becomes very difficult so my appeal to you, Pastor Struggling, and get to prayer. Don't choose anybody. Choose people who, number one, are loyal to you, 
use disciples to do ministry with. Don't just get anybody. There are people who come to churches out from other churches, they join you and whatever view. Before you are sure this person is loyal to you and is a real disciple, never appoint him to any leadership position. At the end of the day, is the same person who will remove you from what God has called you to do. Loyalty is 100% must be demanded and obedience and submission. Mm. Those are critical and then it's affecting by the scriptures. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Perhaps there's someone who wants to get born again mm. to receive Christ. Uh, yes. Kindly pray for them. If you are out there and you like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is the right way to go because we know the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God through Jesus Christ is eternal life. You would like to get saved, I want to pray with you. Pray after me loud there. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me. From today, I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, you have been born again. Join a church where you will be spiritual in a church. And then you will become a, a, a servant of God. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. My take home tonight, everything starts and ends with leadership. Number two, loyalty has no compromise. Number three, if you compromise your calling, you compromise your destiny. I hope that you've learned something today. That has been my testimony on JCC TV with Bishop Asami Kiangi, lead pastor JCC at the river. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>